Legend has it that in one tiny beach town, a dead man comes back to life when a storm rolls in. The skies start getting darker, the winds start picking up, and it's, it goes downhill very, very quickly. And once the gray man arrives, one thing is for sure, destruction is soon to follow. We know that his appearance means that it's time to leave. His message is clear, and his presence is alarming. I can't say the hair stood up on my head because I don't have any, but it did stand up on the back of my neck. After haunting these shores for centuries, his story lives on in infamy. Ever since the 1800s, the gray man has been on the lips of people in tandem with hurricanes in Polly's Island. coast of South Carolina's low country, and just 70 miles south of Charleston, lies the sleepy little beach town of Pawleys Island, where a shadowy spirit that locals call the Gray Man has endured for centuries. Every time a storm comes, you always start to hear about the Gray Man again. I don't want to see the Gray Man because that means bad news for the area. I do know a family that has seen him. Back years back, they have definitely said that he was real, and they saw him. There is no shortage of gray man stories on Pawleys Island, so folks around here are always on their toes. I would turn and run, and if you see me run, then you know I'm scared, because I'm not going to do a lot of running. Full of supernatural lore, Ghost sightings come with the territory of this enchanted island. We have more ghost stories in this little area than just about anywhere on the East Coast. But he is one of the most haunted places. Local author Elizabeth Huntsinger has spent years documenting these tales and knows that dreaded encounters with the Gray Man go hand in hand with nature's deadly wrath. Any sighting of the Gray Man around Polly's Island is legendary. And the one that I tend to think is the most um, significant goes way back. In October of 1954, a young newlywed couple were spending their honey... anyone to be knocking at the door, particularly since this was October, an off-season for Polly's Island. The man walked down the stairs and answered the door. He saw a man stranger in crumpled gray with his facial features obscured by a gray hat. He said that he could smell the salt of the ocean on the man's clothing. The groom stood there and saw him disappear before his very eyes. Who, who was it? Who was at the door? It was the gray man. We gotta go. He knew that he and his wife needed to leave. Come on, grab, grab so they packed their things and left. Hurricane Hazel came the very next day. Nobody had known it was coming. It was terrible. Without modern day technology, Hurricane Hazel and its course are very difficult to predict. Meteorologist Rob Fowler knows just how hard it would have been to tell a storm is coming. Forecasters at that time felt like it was going to stay offshore because weather satellites didn't come into play until 1960. Warnings were up, but when it took that little left turn that did make landfall right along the South Carolina, North Carolina border. They would have been fast asleep probably when the hurricane came in had they not been warned by that 
early morning knock on the door. Wind speeds were probably about 140 miles an hour, close to 150 miles an hour. It created a storm surge of some 18 feet. It was a big boy that was talked about quite a bit. A lot of the old timers always talk about Hurricane Hazel in 1954. The legendary storm decimates the island, leveling homes and taking lives. But the newlyweds are able to escape just in time. The gray man saved this couple. Hurricane Hazel certainly left its mark on Pauly's Island, and unfortunately, it's just one of many storms to do so. As a barrier island, Pauly's is extremely susceptible to this kind of dangerous and destructive weather. A barrier island is a landform that basically runs parallel with the coast and typically is cut off as an island from the mainland. So it is the first line of defense for a landfalling tropical system. Not only does it get hit the hardest, but this fragile island falls prey to the most vicious storms. Most of the storms along the coast of South Carolina are the ones that come all the way from Africa. There's not much land to slow these things down. There's a lot of warm water, and that's what these systems need. They need that warm ocean water to generate their strength and energy. While it may seem like the people of Pauly's Island are doomed, they do have one saving grace. The gray man has been appearing before every documented hurricane since 1822. Some say he warns people of Polly's Island. He appears as sort of a misty form, dressed in gray clothing. Local historian Mary Boyd has been tracking the gray man's appearances for decades and believes this ghost has a mission. We don't look forward to his visits because we know it means uh, a catastrophe is about to happen, but at least uh, we think he, he's sort of an angel. He does come to warn and to save lives. And for this reason, residents of Pauly's Island are grateful for the gray man's recurring visits. He comes for these hurricanes um, that are perhaps the primary concern for Pauly's Island. Uh, residents. And so there's a nice synergy there between the anxieties of the people and what the, the gray man is coming to do. And that's not by accident. Legends often capture um, the most significant anxieties or fears or hopes of a community. And that's certainly the case uh, for the gray man. We've appreciated his staying here on earth to warn others. But even though the gray man serves the people of Pauly's Island, his story chills them to the bone. There was nobody to tell them what to do and help them do what they needed to do to stay safe. Because it is born from deadly weather and a love story so tragic that his soul will never rest. It's a very sad thing that happened, especially on the day that he was going to be reunited with his fiance. Island, the oldest seaside resort in America, is known to many as a beachfront utopia. Most of the time, because its precarious position makes it a barrier for some of nature's most violent and disruptive storms. Polly's Island is right there on the forefront of, of the brunt of a storm. But there is a silver lining to this terrifying cloud. The people of Pauly's Island have a guardian spirit to warn them of a looming storm. My best friend's dad actually saw the gray man once. He didn't really talk about it much, but my friends told me a bunch about it. Sightings of the Gray Man have been around for generations. 
and many believe his origin dates back to the early 1800s, when plantations were thriving on South Carolina's mainland. There were more than 150 rice plantations at the heyday of the rice culture, and Georgetown County was the wealthiest county in the entire United States. So this was an aristocratic society, extremely wealthy people. Plantation life on the mainland is just about as good as it gets at that time. That is, until the summer heat brings a deadly disease. They soon discovered that the warm weather months were a disease time, and they suffered fevers. And there is little that can be done when it comes to the source of their illness. Their rice fields they had stagnant water. Now this drew mosquitoes like almost nothing else in the world does. And the mosquitoes carried malaria. So wealthy plantation owners take leave of their plantations in the summer months and retreat to the breezy barrier island across the marsh. On Polly's Island, prevailing wind is from the ocean onto the land for most of the day, so that keeps the mosquitoes at bay. Even though Polly's Island is the perfect summer safe haven, the change of location is still a huge undertaking, especially since there aren't any roads going from the mainland to the island. Every spring, they would have to pack up everything they would need for about five or six months. It was put on boats and floated across the marsh to the island. It's during this time that the legend of the Gray Man was born. And his tale is one of love, heartache, and death. There was a young lady staying here on the island with her parents who were rice planters, and she was very much in love. She was awaiting with bated breath the arrival of her fiance from Britain. Finally, after months of being away, the young man's ship docks. And while he is weary from traveling, thoughts of his beautiful betrothed keep him going. The fiancé recently returned. So after greeting his family, he hopped on his horse with his manservant and galloped away to Polly's Island to set the wedding date. But in his haste, he makes a careless decision. He was impatient and tried to force his way through the marsh, even though it was very dangerous. And in the marsh lurks a sludge made from soil that has been pushed into the water by heavy rains. The densely packed mire, called pluff mud, is known for being both dangerous and deceptive. It's very sticky, very miry. You can sink very deep into it. It looks almost like you could walk across it, but this, of course, results in going down, down, down. And just like quicksand, once you are stuck in pluff mud, it's very difficult to break free. It's certain death for most. And legend has it that it's here the young man meets his untimely demise. He fell into the pluff mud and he suffocated. The manservant had been right behind him and had avoided getting into the quagmire and could stand only helpless while the young man was lost. When the young woman learns of her fiancé's death, she is overcome with grief. 
To cope with her sorrow, the young woman took to walking on the beach daily for hours. It seemed to be the only way that she could find solace from what had happened. But that's just the beginning of the young lover's story. As fate would have it, they are reunited one last time. And that meeting will set the stage for a legend that continues to this very day. I saw something, and I've heard too many stories of different people who said they saw him. It must be something to the story. man is for sure but most people on Pauly's Island believe he was a young man returning to his fiance after a long trip abroad he was in such a hurry to see his beloved that he cut across the marshlands and his horse fell in the marsh <laughs> and hiding just below the surface lies a deadly concoction made by mother nature called pluff mud a mixture of sand and water and decayed vegetation. And once the young man is caught in the quagmire, it's impossible to escape, and he dies just miles away from being reunited with his one true love. His manservant who was riding along with him was unable to save him, but he came on along to the island to tell the young lady what had happened. Upon hearing the loss of her fiancé, the young woman was so grief-stricken, and for weeks all she could do was just walk the beach at Polly's Island, mourning her lover. Thinking she will never see him again, the young woman is devastated. But as the legend goes, the two lovers will meet again. As she was walking on the beach, she noticed an apparition of sorts. And as she got closer, she realized it was the form of a man. And the man then moved toward her. And as he got closer, she recognized it was her love. There was no doubt that it was him. She went to him with open arms, with no hesitation. But her joy turns to heartbreak in the blink of an eye. As he got into proximity that she could reach out for him, he just disappeared. And if she wasn't distraught then, she was hysterical now. She did not know why he had appeared to her, but it was profound. She knew that he had come for a reason to visit her. And to make matters worse, when she tells her parents, they fear their daughter has lost her mind. I don't know where he went, but he... You think that you saw him there, but he wasn't there. It'll be all right. No, he was there. He's back. You're going to be fine. You're only going to go away for a little while. Fearing for their daughter's mental health, the parents arrange to take her to a doctor and leave the island immediately. But little do they know, their departure will save all of their lives. Shortly after the girl's family left, a hurricane made landfall on the island, nearly devastating it. The storm of 1822 was one of the most fierce hurricanes in history. And even worse, nearly everyone on the island perishes in the storm. In terms of weather forecasting, they didn't have somebody stepping up, giving them information to say, you need to leave. Without any kind of warning, the people on Pauly's Island are sitting ducks. They didn't know when it was coming. They didn't know how bad it would be. This is before we had the technology we have today. We didn't have weather satellites. We didn't have weather radar. It was basically just watching a parametric pressure change and maybe watching the way the winds were blowing or how the clouds were forming. Even if people had recognized the telltale signs of a storm, no one could have predicted one of this magnitude, a reality the young woman and her family are sure of. After they arrived home and the storm hit, 
they realized that they had been miraculously saved from being there at the time of the storm and credited the apparition of the young man with their reason for leaving Polly's Island. While the gray man remains a legend, the storm of 1822 goes down in history, which gives credence to his tale. Historical evidence that uh, is part of a legend. It's going to make that legend stronger. And again, because we're talking about sort of rational people who are looking for answers, strong historical connections provide that kind of evidence. But that's not the only reason why the story of the Gray Man continues. As the legend goes, ever since then, the Gray Man has appeared to someone before every major hurricane that has struck Polly's Island. But only those who have actually seen him are certain that he's real. For that reason, many write him off as local folklore. Pauley's Island native Glenn Cox was one of those people convinced the ghost in gray is just a good story. I was skeptical. I don't usually believe in ghosts at all. But once Glenn comes face to face with the legend, he changes his mind. I saw something, and I don't know how to explain it. And heeds his warning. I knew it was not of natural source. I said, I'm gonna get off the island. The legend of the gray man on Pauly's Island is widely accepted folklore. And even if residents don't believe in the shadowy figure, they have grown to embrace him. I'd like to believe there's somebody out there protecting us. Much like you do? Uh, yeah, kind of like, a, I'll take any help I can get. It's almost like the gray man almost represents like the camaraderie of the island. Everybody who lives here is super willing to help one another out, and the gray man kind of represents that. Everyone respects the gray man and the part he plays in the history of this island, but only those who have encountered him are certain this ghost exists. And for longtime resident Glenn Cox, seen was believing. It was during Hurricane Floyd. The deputies came around with their loudspeakers and blowing the sirens on and off, telling us that we had to evacuate. The hurricane was approaching and they were predicting a water surge. As the storm rolls in, Glenn's loyalty to the island keeps him around to make sure everything is as it should be. Everybody evacuated. There was nobody else around on the island at all. There was no electricity on the island, the lights were out. There was no cars or anything. Glenn is faced with a tough decision of whether or not to leave his beloved home. But as he makes a trip around the island, he gets an unmistakable sign. I drove to the north end and saw everything seemed to be in order and I elected to drive to the south end. And on my way back, all of a sudden, I looked up and observed an illumination in the top window of the Pelican Inn. Bed and breakfast built a long time ago. It was an eerie feeling, actually. I knew that nobody was on the island, knew it had no electricity. And I said, what can this be? It was a yellowish green glow, and it looked like a an individual standing in the middle of the glow. I can't say the hair stood up on my head because I don't have any, but it did stand up on the back of my neck and my arm and I got goosebumps. <laughs> it was a strange feeling, it really was. I knew it was not of natural source. That was my feeling. I said, I'm going to get off the island, and I went to go down the South Causeway, and when I got into the low spot, which we call the bottom, the water was crossing the road, and was about three or four feet deep. That's when I, I said, I think I saw the gray man. He was warning me. I turned around, went back on the island, and then went off the North Causeway. I really did think he is a protector. Thanks to the gray man's warning, Glenn makes it off the deserted island unscathed and he'll never question the legend again.
When all is said and done, Hurricane Floyd is responsible for 57 deaths and four and a half billion dollars in damage. But there's more still to the legend of the gray man. His powers extend beyond the prediction of a terrible storm. And it's been this way from the very beginning. After the storm of 1822, the family realized that they had been miraculously saved and credited the apparition with their reason for leaving Polly's Island. But that's not all they have to thank the gray man for. When the family returned to the island, they found that houses were not where they had left them. Some houses were gone, some were piles of rubble. But when they came to their own home, they found it untouched by the storm. It is almost as if the gray man shielded their home from the deadly and destructive storm of 1822. Folks here, a storm is on the horizon. They are eager to encounter the gray man in hopes that their homes might be spared. When the sky darkens, uh, people will purposely stroll the beach hoping to get a glimpse of the gray man. Right now, we're looking at the most powerful hurricane to strike the Georgia, South Carolina area this century. So in September of 1989, when news spreads of the worst storm to hit the Carolina coast in decades, folks are on the lookout for everyone's favorite foreboding figure. We started tracking Hugo from the inception when it kind of came off the continent of Africa. It just became a storm that was a cluster of thunderstorms to begin with. But you take a thunderstorms, cluster, you move it into the ocean, gets over that warm water, then you start to see potential low pressure developing and some kind of circulation, and then we start looking at these storms a little more in depth. So that was when we really started to say, we need to take this seriously. And that's three days before landfall. Now, this is a stronger hurricane, I think, than most any folks still living in this part of the country have seen. The predictions of Hurricane Hugo were dire right away. We knew days before it was coming that it was predicted to develop into a Category 4 storm. So we knew that it was going to be bad. By the time this area right here gets into the coast, hurricane force winds will set in, so everybody needs to rush to completion any measures that they still have to take to get ready for this hurricane. When people began hearing reports of Hurricane Hugo getting closer and the chances of it making landfall, people did go walking on the beach hoping to see the gray man in between hurricane preparations. And no family on Pauly's Island needs to prepare as much as Melanie Tanner's parents, Jim and Carla Moore. When Mama and Daddy heard about Hugo, they were real concerned because weeks before, Daddy's insurance was canceled because the insurance company wanted him to fix the roof, and he said it didn't leak, he wasn't fixing it. So they canceled his insurance. Knowing that there was no insurance made it a lot scarier for mom and daddy. If they weren't insured and the house blew away, they'd be on their own completely with no way to build it back. This is it. If it's gone, it's gone. If Hurricane Hugo is as bad as they say, the Moore's home on Pauly's Island is gone for good. Mom and daddy would walk on the beach every day. So they decided they'd go for a walk before they left. When Mom and Daddy went down on the beach, there was nobody down there but them. Then they saw this man. He looked like a real person, walking on the beach like they were. They got ready to speak when he got closer, and he just wasn't there anymore. Daddy said he looked like you could touch him, like he was a person, but he just disappeared. They thought, hmm, that's 
weird, but we need to be going. We don't have time to deal with it right now. With a mandatory evacuation underway, Pauly's Island braces itself for a catastrophe. And that's exactly what they get. This was the worst storm they had seen since Hazel, and I think it may have been even worse. Hurricane Hugo made landfall the morning of September 22nd. Sustained winds of 135 miles an hour. The gust we registered about 175. The uh, highest storm surge we saw was close to 21 feet. It's a whole different world when you see it on a satellite image and then when it makes landfall. I wouldn't say I was surprised by it, but I was amazed. I was in awe. You can't believe it. When the skies start getting darker, the winds start picking up, and all of a sudden it goes downhill very, very quickly. And amidst all of their troubles, the people of Pauly's are left wondering if they have been abandoned by their beloved gray man. The news media was saying that probably the gray man had not been sighted because of all the technology, so there wasn't any reason for him to protect anybody. Little did they know, this vigilant spirit would never give up on Pauly's Island. And when the storm subsides, his legend will be proven once and for all. On September 21st, 1989, the South Carolina coast is hit by one of the most powerful hurricanes in history. And the gray man's beloved home, Pauly's Island, sits directly in its path. When storms are moving over water, they're not encountering much friction. When they reach land, all of a sudden, you get buildings and you get trees and you get that friction that slows the storm down a little bit. But before it's weekend and before anything has happened, a barrier island is going to get your first punch. And the second part of the storm was worse than the first part of the storm. You've got the forward motion of the storm, and at the same time, you've got the storm rotating. So basically, all of a sudden, what it's doing is it's picking up water and pushing it on shore. While no one knows why such powerful storms exist, we do know how they come to be. Hurricanes get their strength from what we call latent heat of condensation. The amount of energy it takes to transfer a gas, something you can't see, water vapor, into a liquid or a solid, something you can see, is tremendous. So that's what fuels these storms. That's that process that gives those hurricanes our strength and energy. But it's not just the sheer force of Hurricane Hugo that threatens Pauly's Island. It's the size of this storm that stands to destroy this beach town for good. Average hurricane size and diameter is about 300 miles. Hurricane Hugo is about 600 miles in diameter, so Hugo was twice the average size. In the end, Hurricane Hugo is one for the record books. In documented history, it was probably the worst that we've had along the South Carolina coast. Polly's Island fared the worst. We could tell from the debris that was spread far and wide that things were bad. Thankfully, everyone on Polly's Island survives the storm. However, spirits are at an all-time low. There's a whole thing that goes on when a hurricane hits. And it's not just during the hurricane, it's after the hurricane when you don't have power, when you don't have clean clothes, when people lost everything, when they're just looking for water. It reminded me of a third world country. It was heartbreaking to see not just the damage, but houses were totally gone. There was nothing left but the concrete pad where it had stood. Uh, no belongings, nothing, completely swept away. And in their darkest hour, the people of Pauly's are left wondering if they have been abandoned by their guardian angel. People wondered, where is the gray man? But soon, their questions will be answered, because amidst the wreckage of this beloved beach town lies hope.
after the storm, I came back with Mom and Daddy. The National Guard was keeping people out. You had to prove that you had property to get on. The closer we got to the house, the more I cried because it looked so terrible. You couldn't even drive down here. There were pieces of houses and all kinds of things in the road. So we had to walk, and the closer we got, the scarier it looked. People's belongings were everywhere, and pieces of houses, and refrigerators, and mattresses, and people's lives were just everywhere. It's different when you're here than when you see it on TV, because you're getting a 360 view, and it's a lot worse. And then you could see the roof of our house just peeping up. The house was virtually untouched, except, you know, we lost a screen. It was just something. The floors were dry, completely dry. There were little notes on the refrigerator. They hadn't even blown off. And everything was just like they had left it. And it was just so ironic because the insurance company wanted Daddy to repair the roof and the house didn't even leak. And then you had all the neighboring houses around which probably did have insurance in the yard. Mama was the one that at first said, you know, I think I might have seen the gray man. She kind of whispered it. I thought, well, it does make sense. The legend is no harm comes to those who see the gray man, and no harm came to our house, so maybe she did. With every gray man sighting, his legend grows. And while some people wonder why he picks certain people over others, Melanie Tanner has an idea. You have to be a special person for the gray man to appear to you. And maybe he picked mom and daddy because he felt like they might need it more than somebody else. Once again, the gray man comes to the rescue for a family on Pauly's Island, and his appearance has a profound effect on everyone. Legends can be very powerful for a community um, because they do encapsulate a local history and a shared identity. Just on the kind of psychological level of dealing with the unpredictableness of hurricanes, this legend provides a degree of comfort that um, is really attractive. Certainly he's not causing the weather and he can't stop the weather, but he can at least warn people to take precautions about the weather. But even though this legend helps boost morale, people still have to deal with the physical devastation from the storm. The memory I have is just walking around the next day and just looking around and just going, what just happened? Looked like a war. But in an unexpected turn of events, the Gray Man finds a way to help Holly's Island rebuild as well. The Gray Man not only warns people to get away, he is a lure to draw people back in. Even though Pauly's Island is familiar with extreme and dangerous storms, nothing could have prepared them for the wrath of Hurricane Hugo and the havoc it wreaked on this little barrier island. It was heartbreaking to see the damage. Houses were totally gone. There was nothing left. People just walked around in sort of a, a daze. But when news of a gray man sighting spreads, the people of Pauly's Island start to perk up. Once people knew that the gray man had been seen before the hurricane, it had a profound effect on Pauly's Island. I can only imagine that people ask the question, do we go back, do we rebuild? And then to sort of realize and hear this story that the gray man did in fact show up. He wasn't giving up on Polly's Island. 
I think it restored people's faith, even who don't believe in the gray man, but just believe in the concept that it reminded them of the values and of why they love their community so much. And so I think, you know, it operated as a rallying cry for people to come back. So rather than deserting the devastated island, folks stand their ground. This was not going to be the end of Polly's Island. People helped each other out as best they could. Spirits were strong. People said, this isn't the end. We're down, but we're not out. We'll rebuild. And it has happened. People built newer and bigger and better homes. And there are more people wanting to move onto the island than the island has room for. I would say that Polly's Island is thriving even more now than before you go. The gray man has sort of helped people to, to know that this is not the end. And even though people will never forget the damage Hurricane Hugo did to their island, this memory is just that. And the effects of the storm are no longer visible in the Polly's Island of today. This community will always be grateful to the gray man for what he has done for them over the years. So whether they believe in ghosts or not, they stand behind this legend. We all know that there is a spirit that watches over us in time of incoming storms and danger, and that he takes care of us, and that makes Polly's Island special. It doesn't do anything but bring intrigue to the area. I mean, it makes people want to come and and see what's going on. It is kind of cool that there is somebody from somewhere else looking out for us and trying to keep us from danger and from harm. It's a very special treat to have these stories that have been handed down from generation to generation. And I'm very proud to share the story of the gray man. Over the years, the kind and benevolent spirit has gone above and beyond for Pauly's Island. And it's a good thing, because with their history of violent and erratic storms, they need all the help they can get. Much like the weather, a legend like the Gray Man can never be explained completely, although some people will try. The Gray Man obviously feels that Pauly's Island is worth protecting. He has come back time after time. The legend of the gray man is a love story. The young couple separated and the young man, even after death, wanting to protect his fiancee. But regardless of why he's here, folks are glad that the gray man has decided to make Pauly's Island his home. Yeah, I'd feel really lucky to be able to see the gray man to know that he's gonna protect me over the storm. We have an island here that's very susceptible to the ocean, so uh, if the gray man wants to come down and, and give me a heads up, I'd be happy to oblige. Nobody knows if the gray man is real or not, but the storms that follow him are, and now the history of these two powerful forces are intertwined making the wild and unpredictable weather on Pauly's Island even more of a mystery.